samples off to uh, Canada to get them tested. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Thermos Bison and welcome back to the channel. I had to take the 332 back to Duncan, the Keystone tractor. Uh, they had to do a little bit of service maintenance on it. Nothing major. Got it back just now. I'm gonna put some more diesel in it. I'm gonna unload it and I'm gonna put some hay out. Then I'm probably gonna go get Brooks, pick her up, and then uh, we're gonna come back out here and we're gonna feed some cubes to the yearlings. She loves uh, feeding cubes to them and throwing them out. Um, we're gonna do that in my truck when we get back. So uh, stay tuned for today. There's something else I want to show you guys uh, that has something to do with my new Holland uh, skid steer here. It is, uh, remember the cage I told you um, we were getting built before uh, we worked the bison? Well, it is 90% completed and it's here. I have it and I'm going to show it to you. Actually, I got to get it off the trailer. I'm going to get off the trailer. I'm going to show it to you. I still got some hydraulic stuff to get done on it, but um, can't wait for you guys to see it. All right, guys, take a look. So this is the cage right here. We weren't able to use it because um, it got built the week after. I, I should have been a little bit more proactive in getting it done in sooner time. Um, but uh, we had trouble locating the right size of this hydraulic cylinder here. Um, locally, in, in an Ardmore and Ada, all I could find was 8 inch. We ne really needed something shorter here for our push and pull uh, for our hydraulic. So we end up finding a six inch, um, one through 3C cattle feeders, some friends of ours down the road, Mill Creek. And uh, so we got two of these, but this sucker is built heavy duty and I love it. The only thing that we're missing now is the hydraulic hookup. So I've got to take it to a place in Davis and we'll get hoses ran off of these hydraulic cylinders that will go back to here. We've got two inch square tubing. We've got expanded metal. Most of this whole frame is two inch thick steel plate right here. Six inch hydraulic cylinder, a skid plate. Wasn't very much, it was maybe $200. Um, built at Medill at JNI Manufacturing. And then you've got these heavy uh, barrel hinges is what I believe they're called. Um, six or seven inch barrel hinges. So the only thing we're missing is the hydraulic hoses. And so I got to actually take it to the place so we can get a good measurement on it and uh, that it will can reach here to there. So I actually probably have to load this up, get some measurements of the distance when it's actually attached. I had to use the grapple to get it off of the trailer. So I just have it on right now, but let's uh, go put the grapple up and then uh, let's hook up to this and see what it looks like actually on the skid steer. Looks pretty awesome hooked up. So we just need to know our hoses. They'll come here. Those two will meet right here in the middle off of these. And then we'll run our in and out right here off of our hydraulics. So looks like a beast. What we may do just to help with uh, maybe comfort here instead of them banging up against uh, expanded metal, we can always put conveyor belting here um, to put on this. So I got this idea. I'm not gonna take credit for any of this. The guy in town I'm close with Kind of family friends with for a long time uh his name's luke he built this for me kind of put our minds together on it but i got this idea first from uh charles addington out at the uh at the charles addington 
bison ranch out in Woolworth, Texas, and then he also has a ranch in uh, Holdenville, Oklahoma. I went out and helped him. You can go back and watch that video. It's one of my biggest videos ever um, that kind of blew up. The first one blew up, but I went out and helped him, and he was using one of these on his skid steer, and it was awesome. I just watched how effective and safe it was, and so kind of started rolling in my head, and I, wasn't, I didn't have very many animals back then, um, and then I went to South Dakota, Dakota Pure, Scott Osmond, a friend of mine up there, who I bought some, uh, uh, bought some of my animals from, my yearlings. He also had this uh, cage on the front of theirs, and I was like, this is pretty awesome. Now they have way more bison than we do. I saw how safe this was, how effective it was, just pushing the bison, and um, just getting the job done basically in a safe manner where you don't have to get in there. And so once we get the hydraulics hooked up on this and get it going, It'll be awesome. So I honestly got to give credit to Charles Addington and uh, Scott Osmond for uh, the idea of this right here. Just picked up baby girl and we're at the Ponderosa. We are going to go feed the yearlings. She likes to feed the yearlings. Got her in the truck, so it's a lot safer in the truck. So we're gonna pull out here and go feed our yearlings.
go. Good. That's how you do it. And you're eating right next to us now. Keep throwing it out, they'll find it. One up here all by herself. There you go. Where's she going? Throw her some food. Throw it out there for her. See, come on, Canada. Come on, Canada. Canada. There you go. Five, two, three. They'll come find it. See, look, here he comes. There's Hoss. There's Hoss. There's Hoss. All right, so Brooks and I are out here having a good time. Enjoying a nice pretty sunset and cool weather. She's having fun throwing cubes out to the yearlings here. <laughs> if she can make sure to throw it out of the truck instead of in the truck, I always find cubes later on in my uh in the my side of my door. Um anyways, <laughs> no, these animals are looking very pretty at these Canada and um Dakota South Dakota yearlings. They are they're awesome, they're super fluffy right now and they're uh they're doing really good so excited for the future of uh, these uh, gals and um you know so hoss is in this group and so he's got 21 females uh for a young bull i think it's a stretch to make sure that you breed a 21 female so with that we're gonna have to really consider i've talked about bringing dunbar over and that subject is mixing him in with this group here or do we put him with Big Joe? And I know that creates a lot of interesting questions and situations with Big Joe and Dunbar. So with that being said, I think the only time it could get really interesting is when the two bulls are together during um, breeding season. I think that may be our only challenge, but uh, I think there's a, I'm not sure. Both of those bulls are pretty mild mannered bulls, but uh, who knows when it comes to breeding season. So we still got a lot of things to think about, but something else on this subject, hanging out with these Canada and South Dakota um, yearlings is what we're doing is we uh, pulled hair on the South Dakota uh, yearlings. So they're all the ones with the white tags like this one right here, the ones with the yellow, just to catch you up. Some of you already probably know this. Someone, the ones with the yellow are from Canada. The ones right here are uh, from South Dakota. Uh, the yellow tags, like I said, are from Canada. They're from the Wolverine Bison. Um, some awesome producers up there uh, in uh, Canada. We pulled hair on these South Dakota ones when we worked them here a couple weeks ago. And what we're going to do is my buddy Scott told me when I got these that there was a chance of having woods in them. Uh, and they're South Dakota ones. And so I, I, I knew that and I took the risk because he had some awesome animals. And I was there helping him. I work them and I had an opportunity to go ahead and bring some uh, down for a good foundation breeding herd and so just to check we're going to send those hair samples off to Canada to get them tested for woods versus plains they'll be able to tell us how much woods is in these bison most all of Scots are our plains bison at South Dakota but we need to test to see how much woods and if there's any woods and these that I brought from South Dakota.